what is going on guys my name is Josh and I got something to tell you so this video was going to be the first episode in what I'm calling I got something to tell you I think it's a nice intro we'll just have to see how it goes I don't think the intro really matters that much just just kind of something to flow into a video just to the hardest part is starting a video um, and what to say obviously you can have contents in the middle but in the beginning you gotta have something to start off with so this is going to be an in-between of like a news roundup and a podcast. It's just going to be myself. Uh, so there might be some jump cuts in it uh, because sometimes I don't have all my thoughts taken out. Sometimes I want to look up some stuff. So we'll see what happens. Basically, this is going to be about the videos that I was going to put up uh, and what I think about that. I ended up not putting up two videos this past week uh, because my upload speed absolutely crapped on me and I didn't have enough time before work to just sit there and babysit the uh, the upload so this is gonna be a big roundup I'm thinking I might put it out one of these once a week and that's not all I'm gonna be uploading during the week I hope to be uploading more videos but we'll just have to see it depends on what happens during that week and if I actually care enough to have an opinion on it uh, but we'll just have to see so today, uh, I want to start with Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which uh, got a release date and more information about the game and also a little uh, more of a trailer. Uh, well, it wasn't even a trailer. It was more of like a cutscene. That was, that was, that's a part of the game. It's kind of, I would guess maybe in the middle of it. So the release date for Uncharted The Lost Legacy is going to be August 22nd and, uh, in the U.S. of A., and the 23rd in the Europe's other places not too sure it's gonna be $40 uh, US dollars and uh, and 50 Canadian so wherever you are in Europe you'll just have to equate that to where you're doing I'm not doing conversions for you you got it but so yeah and so on the blog post for Naughty Dog and the uncharted the game.com buy page i guess the pre-order page they had more information about it uh they basically saying if you bought the uncharted 4 digital deluxe edition the triple pack or the uh uh what's it called what's it called the explorers pack then you will get the uh, lost legacy for free um, which is cool uh, if you didn't do that then it's 40 dollars, like i said so it won't be that much uh, it's in a good position other than it being kind of next to uh, Shadow of War. Uh, but I, for me at least, I didn't like the first one. And I'm hesitant to try this one uh, for the Shadow of War. But, you know, we'll just have to see. Again, I will definitely be picking this up when it comes out and playing it. Uh, it shouldn't be that long. But they said it was in between Left Behind from The Last of Us and uh, Uncharted 4. So it's kind of a gap, but it won't be too bad. So if you did not buy any of those editions that I uh, brought up previously, then if you pre-order it on the PlayStation Store, you'll be able to get Jack and Daxter the Recursor Legacy, um, which is pretty cool. You know, you pre-order it there and you get a free game. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I would encourage you to do that if you like those old school platformers. Uh, but they're bringing it back, so that's 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 really cool. Also, like you might have seen that they're bringing back the other games, also. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, they've said that Nathan Drake is going to be any part of this story now. Whether he gets mentioned, which I would think he would, uh, at least get mentioned. I don't care if he's there, right? I don't care if he's there. But the way these two are a part of the game, uh, he has to be mentioned in in there somewhere because they both had experiences with him. Uh, which Nadine Ross, you know, she's a newer character. She just got in on, on Uncharted 4. Uh, and she's, I, I like her. I like her. Obviously, in the uh, last game, you didn't really like her that much. In Uncharted 4, you didn't really like her that much. Uh, and Chloe was kind of wishy-washy with uh, what she did. Uh, but now you get to play as Chloe. Different mechanics. Uh, not totally different. Obviously, you have the cell phone. We saw the lock picking over at PSX. Uh, but other than that, they've said that, you know, it's going to be the same puzzles, the beautiful cinematics. Um, and the wide open landscapes and obviously action packed movie type stuff happening as you're playing, um, which is always great. It's always satisfying to play those games for some reason. Uh, you always have, I feel like I, I just have this soft spot for 
Uncharted, right? That I don't feel like I could go play him again, but I kind of crave for that feeling that it gave me. And, uh, and I, I realized that cause I played Uncharted 4 late. I probably finished it maybe a month and a half ago. Um, and I just had that feeling like this is a good game. Like this is a really good franchise. I love the characters. Uh, I love the mechanics, even though the shooting's kind of wonky. But other than that, dude, like this, this is a great series. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was the rumor about the Nintendo Switch bundle, which I'll just speak on very shortly. Uh, you know, obviously it didn't come out. It was a Russian official. Nintendo store leak apparently um, I think uh, the, the first article about it was posted on Nintendo everything.com and I forget I think it was like any underscore Brian is the guy who talked about it uh, but yeah and he said that it'll probably get announced at the Nintendo Direct thing which happened the other day which obviously it didn't and that kind of has me sad but also for other people I'm happy for right because you can imagine you buy the switch day one but if you would have waited a month later, two months later, no, a month later, you would have gotten uh, a bundle with Mario Kart 8. Now, whether they would have kept the price at 300 which I think they should have, because the game's already been released once, uh, and then, or they could have bumped it up to 350 uh, which still would have stayed in that realm to where it's kind of cheaper to get that, uh, but it wouldn't have been much cheaper. Just to buy a Switch and then buy that separately. But that's beside the point. It would all have been lumped into one. It would have been cheaper either way. Uh, but it still would have been a bundle. Uh, which everybody was crying about. How 1-2 Switch should have been a bundle with it. It should have. The game shouldn't even be $50. Pretty sure it's $50 just because of the actors that they had to hire to do all of that. Which doesn't really add that much to the game. Uh, the, the the gameplay again. It doesn't matter how it looks. It could look great, right? The game could look great. The gameplay isn't fun, entertaining, keeps you going. Then uh, it's a little hard to stand behind it and play it and support it and say, yeah, this is a good game. Fifty dollars, way too much. Uh, another thing, the Nintendo Classic has been discontinued. They're rolling out the last shipments this month. This will be the last month. That there are switches, not switches, classics coming straight from Nintendo and being sold. Now, they always said that this wouldn't be a long term thing, but I think what people were thinking is that this they would have made more than, than what they made because they didn't make a lot. I know at my GameStop, they, uh, they would get, I think at the most, they got maybe a handful. And then after that, it's just been one or two at a time. And they've sold relatively quick. Uh, now people have, have kind of slowed down on them. Uh, but now, you know, if you, I think that, I think it's slowed down just because, well, I'll just wait until, you know, nobody else wants one and it's available. Well, now if you don't have it, then, uh, whew, you're gonna have to pay a little, little pretty penny to get it. You're gonna have to pay maybe about twice as much as, uh, somebody bought it brand new for. Cause people have either bought them up and selling them online for $120, maybe even more. Usually the auctions, they go to about that. That's when people stop paying for it or uh, wanting it that bad. And they might move on and do a SNES Classic. Who knows? I'd be more inclined to buy that just because my cousins did have a, uh, a SNES and uh, we played that a little bit. But I was never really into the original Nintendo and, and stuff like that. So if they, if they did a uh, Super Nintendo, that would be pretty cool. Um, and I... I I don't see why they shouldn't do it, but they're just kind of a limited run and it'll probably be the same thing happens. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to, uh, to sell Nintendo stuff. Nintendo is very weird about how they do things. Um, I don't agree with a lot, but Hey, you know, they're the ones making the money. I guess if they're, they're making it's, <laughs> it's funny. Like everybody tends to, to, to rag on them because of their, their decisions. And yet, you know, when, when one's available, you know, they're the first people in line to buy it. I, I'm holding off on getting a Switch just because there's a lot of PlayStation games coming out. Well, at least they've, they've came out. Obviously, you have uh, you have Horizon, which came out, which was a great game. I ended up platinuming it. It, it was kind of, I, that game was a perfect platinum, right? Because 
I've seen so many people just like this is my first platinum, this is my first platinum, and it was one of my first platinums. I'm no nowhere near uh, some of the people that I've seen, and some of the people that are probably listening to this. I think I have maybe four or five platinums, um, and then you have like you know it's it's <laughs> it's my name is Mayo is one of them. There's a there's a Telltale game. I did do Call of Duty Four uh, remastered, and that was my first one. And the last trophy was obviously the Mile High Club, but that was a pain. But Horizon was fun. Horizon was the perfect platinum. You did it one playthrough, and that was it. Because uh, it kind of, after you do the final battle scene, it kind of puts you back if you missed anything. Uh, you could do it basically over again, which was, which I think was a good place to do it. Because you could go back and do the final battle scene if you wanted, which was very cool. Very cool. I highly recommend that game if you haven't played it, go and get it, which I heard they're going to be bundling it in with the uh, PlayStation 4 Pro. If that's the truth, then whatever you got to do, just get the PlayStation 4 Pro um, now. Uh, but yeah, in terms of other games, you had like Neo, you had Nier, which I'm yet to play, which I, which I want to play, which I'm waiting for to go down in price a little bit. Uh, I don't really, uh, I, I'm, in the, I'm in a Persona grind right now. I'm about 30 hours into that game, which I've seen other people already platinum it from like the day one of the game coming out, which is insane that there are that many playthroughs in, uh, like two, three playthroughs in. Like that is just, they're grinding, right? Taking their Vita anywhere, just, just, just linking it up to the PS4. And then uh, obviously you had like third party stuff, Mass Effect, I put about 40 hours into and I don't think I even got halfway through it. I think I'm about halfway. I think I'm like 43%. Something like that. Uh, so I'm yet I'm I'm still kind of far away from the ending. I think I'm just messing around, laughing at all the stuff. Uh, the game is is for for being that big of a, a a development cycle. There's a lot of problems with that game, and uh, that's uh, it's not the best. But yeah. Also, DLC coming out for Final Fantasy 15. I did trade in my my Final Fantasy 15. To pre-order, I want to say it was Horizon, um, but I need to go pick up Final Fantasy 15 again. Uh, I have a chance to platinum it, uh, but the DLCs are starting to roll out for that. So only five bucks. Just Gladio's the first one, and uh, the other characters will come. I assume as uh, the time rolls by. Uh, but yeah, other than that, dude, there's just a lot of games, a lot of games to play. And right now, Legends of Zelda is not really. I can't can't really fit into that, right? Uh, it's a game that I might end up liking, but I'm scared that it's just not really gonna grab me like everybody else. Uh, it'll be my first Zelda playing it. Never played any of their Zeldas. I've had Playstations all my life, and uh, yeah, I've just I've, I've never really been attached to it. Obviously, because I haven't played it. Um, you, it seems like if you had a 64. And you played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, then you just have this allegiance that can't be broken no matter what. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I see that pretty much everybody likes the game, and I've also seen some people who just it hasn't grabbed, and they were able to actually take off the rose-colored lenses and be critical of it instead of just saying everything in this game is great. Uh, I was like Angry Joe, um, Colin Moriarty before he left the scene. And, uh, and, you know, I think it was, who was it? The, uh, the Jim Quisition, um, Jim Sterling, he talked about it and you know, it's, it's, it's a good game. I could see that like, if that many people like it, it's a pretty good game. Uh, but you know, it's, it's not the total package at least, right? It's a good, it's a great game. It's not the total package, but I, it, it has been rated one of the highest rated games. So you got to give it that, but I'll, uh, I'll leave my opinions up to when I play it. Uh, I don't want to speak ahead of myself whether I'm going to like it or not, but uh, it'll depend on whether I get a Switch. I'll probably get a Switch when uh, a Super Mario Odyssey bundle comes through because they, if they don't bundle that, then that's going to be very weird if they don't bundle that. And the third and uh, final thing that I want to speak on on this episode is the Xbox One Scorpio, what it means for the for the landscape of the industry and what it means for PlayStation. Uh, what they need to do to counteract and I believe that they've I I want to I want to believe that they have something going for it right now uh, to kind of to balance out between the Scorpio and what they have obviously the PlayStation 4 Pro was not meant to be what the Scorpio is 
uh, it was supposed to be an upgraded console, and I don't think that they were ready for for <laughs> Xbox to come out with Project Scorpio to be that powerful. Uh, I think they were thinking it was going to be just the Slim, and that was going to be their new console. It's going to be you know 4K video and 40% smaller. Take away the power brick, which was which was huge for xbox because that power brick is annoying because i still have the uh, the old vcr xbox one but on to the scorpio uh i was going to do a video over it talking about the uh the Eurogamer trip I did to microsoft or redmond to go see the scorpio and it looks like it's doing very very well like this is going to be a monster of a console if it costs less than uh six hundred dollars i'm going to be very surprised my price point is going to be six hundred to a thousand dollars Somewhere in between that, they should hit it. If it's lower than that, then that is insane. They're losing money uh, from from everything that I've read. Like they they have to be losing money if they're doing that. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Microsoft got something. Got to deal with somebody. Who knows? Uh, but they tested it on the Turn Ten engine, which is the Forza engine, uh, and they had a lot of leeway running at 4K, 60 frames per second. Like it was, it was about 60 to 70% leeway on the CPU, which is a lot for people to play with. It is a lot for people to play with. That's exciting. And that's, that's going to, it's going to depend on how much this thing sells. Cause it already seems obviously Xbox wants to do away with the generational, you know, step up that it's just going to be, everything's going to play on everything. And, and that's going to be it. Every new console would come out all the old Xbox One stuff is going to be able to be played on it, which is exciting and everything. But we'll see how they do it. I feel like it maybe take a little bit more to do that. Maybe it's just the Xbox One. This is the definitive one. Uh, and there's been rumors of a PS5, right? Like the PlayStation, it'd be weird if PlayStation does the generational thing and Xbox just continues to make xbox ones just more and more powerful that can play all the games if that happens in the long run and playstation doesn't allow like the ps5 to play ps4 games if that doesn't happen the people are going to be very upset right because they have to make this thing as powerful as the scorpio if not more powerful now if it's more powerful then I might have to hold off on buying it because that thing's going to be a lot of money and I already have a PC that I can play a lot of games on uh, if I want 60 frames a second and things like that. It'll all depend on the price point. Will this help Xbox? Yeah, I think it will in the long run. As of right now, there still are no games. You have the Sea of Thieves, which looks fun. Uh, State of Decay, which is just a niche thing. Uh, and really the big, the big titles that they push as as their mainstay exclusives are the Forzas, are the Halos, and are the Gears, which I guess you could release the Halo 6. Um, Gears probably won't be releasing anytime soon. Neither will Halo more than likely, uh, unless they got something big. And that's another thing. Like, E3 is coming up. We'll know more about the Scorpio at E3. Uh, any more than that, it's going to be crazy if, if anything does happen. I'm excited to see... Uh, if PlayStation has a third year in a row where they just blow it out of the park. Last year was amazing. There wasn't, you know, if you look at some of the other, some of the other conferences, it was somebody standing up there for 30 minutes talking, and then there was a little bit of gameplay, and there was more people talking, a little bit of gameplay. Uh, this was just a string of gameplay. If you haven't watched it, I would go back and watch like some of the reactions. One thing that I like to go watch is the kind of funny reaction and also the drop frames reaction. Uh, those guys, it was, I, I love hearing the reactions from people at the PlayStation conference. Like it was, it was pretty hype, but, um, and just to let you guys know, I will be doing E3 type coverage. Uh, it probably won't be these long of videos. If you're still here, hello, drop a like and subscribe. If you're still here on this first episode, uh, but you know, I, I will be taking off a semester of school I guess during the summer I've done a semester every single semester including uh last summer and then I had to I had to like fully work a nine to five um well it was really like an, an eight to six but so I really haven't had a lot of time over the past couple of summers to do this hopefully uh, my current job which is just a part-time job won't 
interfere with the uh, with E3 because there's a lot of movement. Everything's like moving up. There's even conferences on Saturday. I don't remember which ones there are. I think it's Bethesda, maybe EA or UB. Uh, it's it's a publisher, not like a uh, like an Xbox or a PlayStation. But yeah, PlayStation Xbox has moved up to Sunday. PlayStation, I don't think, has announced anything yet. But more than likely, they're going to move up. Uh, and if not, then they'll just take center stage Monday and just go for it. Uh, which I don't think they need to move up, right? Everybody's going to have their eyes on them anyway. Uh, and plus Xbox. With Scorpio, that's going to be the main thing, right? Whenever there's a new console, it's going to be that. And usually PlayStation, Xbox, they kind of back and forth with the with the consoles during E3. So we'll see if maybe Sony does something similar to Xbox that they did last year. But they just kind of throw it like, this is the vision we want for the console. Um, and it's coming out next year. Which would be great. Maybe alongside the Pro, they were working on this monster machine. Because they heard through the grapevine that we didn't hear that, you know, Scorpio was coming out. Um, which there was some rumor. So maybe they just went ahead and got started. Be like, look, this is our plans for it. Uh, it might not be what Xbox did to have it in a year. Uh, which they're actually ahead of schedule this year. Which is looking great. So we might get it even earlier. Uh, but, you know, it's still it's, it's not going to change the price of it. So uh, E3 is going to be pretty big. And uh, I'm excited to kind of see. Again, you know, these type of videos won't happen a lot. Uh, I might just do it after each conference. Um, or I might just do a reaction to the conference where I just have it playing. Uh, and then uh, and then just post it up there. So if you guys want to watch my reactions for it. Uh, but like I said, if if I'm working during the conferences, then obviously I can't do it. I'll just do a, a recap of it and uh, just kind of give my opinions for whatever that matters to you guys. Um, but yeah, those are all the, the little tidbits that I had to talk about over this week. This has been 